Hi guys, hope everybody's having a good production day. Um, before we get started, I want to make a few comments on everybody's uh, programming skills. I'm like really, really over the top happy with everybody's programming. There is such a small gap between the people that I think are like the best programmers versus the ones that are say the just say the best and the worst because the worst is definitely not bad i mean there's such a small gap you're all doing real well with this and i really kind of appreciate the work that you're all giving me in class so i'm really happy with that i'm really really happy with the programming uh, i'm going to try to come up with another quiz to kind of bring up your test taking quiz taking skills a little bit for the um midterm I really want to see you all do well on that because it is a big part of your grade. But as far as your programming goes, like I said, um, it's been fantastic. I mean, really, really good. All right. Um, got two things to go over today. One, um, it's one thing I've got to cover. It's not something that I usually um, use in my programming, but it's something I need to cover so that you all have seen it. And does make it where it is a good it is a good test or quiz question. Uh, we've did the while loops, and I felt like everybody grasped it, grasped it, um, all it grasped it real well. The next thing I want to talk about is the do while loops. Sort of lost favor over the years. I see a need for it sometimes, but I rarely, rarely ever use it. Here's what a do while does, and here's the program that I'm writing, that I that I've written. This program averages three test scores, so it's no, no magic to this. I've got int score one, score two, score three, and then a double to do the average. Then I've got a character, a char, again, just to hold the yes or no, uh, whether I want to repeat, whether I want to loop the do while loop. All right, look at this, this do right here, the purpose of this do is to force the user through the code one time. All right, instead of having all the criteria and all the uh, comparisons um, up at the top, this is gonna go through once and then see if it needs to go through again. So let me just go through this, do. So this is going to see for sure, at least once, see out, enter three scores, and I will average them. The user will enter three scores, three integers. It'll do the calculation. You can see here, no magic here. It adds score one, score two, and score three, and divides 3.0, and assigns it to the float average. Then it's going to see out the average is with an inline then here's where things are a little bit different. Does the user want to average another set? Okay. Do you want to average another set? Yes or no? Okay. You're going to enter a letter, the character again. Okay. If you enter a Y, it doesn't matter whether it's capital or it's lowercase, this will loop again and do it again. All right. If you enter no, Actually, the way this is written, you can enter anything besides a Y, and that's going to make it kick out. It's going to see it as no, because see, while again equals Y, or uh, capital Y, or little y. So you could enter one, two, three, but just for the sake of this program, I, I made it, I put it Y or no, yes or no. Okay, again, it's this do is going to force it through. The while is at the bottom of the statement, okay? While again equals y or little y. And if you type in, if you, ent if you enter, if you have entered a y, it'll loop and do it again. Anything else you enter, it'll kick out, go to return zero, and it'll, it'll end the program. So let's give this a run. Enter three scores. Uh, 98, 56, and 88. Average is 80.667. Do you want to run another one? So I'm going to type in a little y, hit enter. 
All right. So it's going to loop back to the top again and force the three. It's going to go through again. Three scores, 88, 96, and 95. I hit enter. All right. It goes to the bottom of the do while loop and it asks you, do you want to have an average and do you want to average another set? I'm going to type in a capital Y this time. It's going to give me three more, 89, 65, and 78. And this final time, I'm going to enter, and I'm just going to enter a three. It says enter Y or N, but the way I wrote this up, it's just checking to see if I enter a capital Y or a lowercase Y, and it kicks out. Okay. See, it says CN again, and I, for again, I put in a three, and it goes, well, again equals Y or uh, capital Y or little y. It did neither, so it kicked out. So that's what a do, a do while does. It forces you through everything, and it puts the while at the bottom. Uh, you're just responsible for this for the test. There is a chance... Uh, I'm going to ask you to write code, and you get to write it any way you want. You might see that this might work best. Uh, but for right now, I just wanted you to kind of get a feel for what a do-while does. And you are responsible for a test or a quiz knowing what it does. The main thing to know is it forces you through the code once, and the while is at the bottom of the statement to see if you want to go back through the, through the loop one more time. Our next topic is one that'll follow us for the rest of the semester. Matter of fact, this there's very few programs the rest of the way that we do not use for loops. Our final program, the Battleship program, we will have so many for loops in it, it's almost dizzying, right? Uh, this program looks familiar. This is the Perfect Squares uh, program, uh, the better that I did. So now this is actually like perfect squares, better, better, but it's an example of how, where to, and how to use for loops. So before we get to the for loop, I want you to remember how this program ran. I've got this commented out. Let me get rid of this comments and remember exactly what this did. All right. All right, this is the program where you entered the first num and the last num, and then basically you squared from the first num to the last num, and uh, you printed out the number and its square. And the way we did this was, you know, we declared, uh, and, uh, declared and assigned 1 and 10 to first and last num. We made first, we, we declared an integer num and assigned first num to it. So that made num one. Then we went down here in the while loop. While num equals last num, it was what less than or equal to last num, it did what was inside these brackets. Okay, it seed out num a couple tabs and num times num, uh, which was its square. And then num in, incremented and did this loop as many times as it took for it to get up to last num for it increment to to refer to increment up to last num all right remember this was the modified enhanced version of an of, of a previous program all right there's a way of making this better let me no i'm not gonna just not gonna just comment it out. I'm going to get rid of it so it's not confusing. All right. All that's gone. All right. It's been replaced by these two lines of code. This is a for loop. All right. For loop has three sections. First, you can tell at the back end of this, here's the, incre here's the incremental statement. 
num. Well, let's go, let's do them in order from left to right. Here I declare an integer num and I assign the value of first num. So basically, I declared an integer num and I assigned one to it. So num equals one. All right, we're going to go through that. We're going to go through this loop. Num as many times as it takes for num, as long as we're going to go through it as long as num is less than or equal to last num. Num is less than or equal to last num. And it's going to increment because I'm telling it to increment here num plus plus. So there we got the three main things in one line. All right. Everything in the line after it, or I could have put this in brackets, but everything I everything the line after this, all right, it'll 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 go through this code 10 times. All right. You remember that from that num equals one, it increments. Um after it's over so then it becomes two then three then four then five then six all the way up to ten all right i'm going to run this code all right that looks identical to what we've done before all right that the, the while loop it's just a lot less code it's a lot cleaner and i think once you get calibrated to it you're going to find this um a lot easier a lot easier to code all right again three parts you know you're declaring a variable here right you're initializing it all right here you're setting up a condition while num is less than or equal to last num all right and this is your increment uh, this is your uh, num incremented then it's going to do this line you know, you can tell here it's going to go from 1 to 10. It's going to happen 10 times. But you can tell it's so easy to change the code for this. Just change that to 100. Run debugger. There it goes to 10,000. Right. And you don't have to start at 1. Watch this. I'm going to start at 990. Right. So think about that. Right. First num equals 990. So first num, we're going to assign to the integer we declare int num. So now 990 is less than or equal to last num. So this is this line. This line is going to run 10 times. It's going to run from 990. Whoops. I meant that to be 99. 99. I'm struggling here, guys. Let's make that 90, right? I want it to go 10 times. So here we go. All right. It goes from 90 to 100. I guess that's 11 times. Yeah. Yep, 11 times. But... You can see you can you can adjust these conditions to make it run from any um, running through any increment. All right. Uh, the one thing I either want to mention here now is this was we were doing perfect squares and the perfect square. You can't take the perfect square of zero. Zero times zero is zero. So we started at one. Most of the time, these things start at zero, and you got to be really careful about this greater than or less than or equal to to make sure you get the range that you want you're going to be you're going to you're going to make some mistakes here you're going to you're going to run too short or run too long so it's you got to really test your code so i'm going to run the code right here 0 to 10 so this is going to run 11 times most people don't realize that 0 to 10 is 11 different times it's going to run for 0 because we've made this, it's going to run from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 11 because we made this less than or equal to. So there you see 0 squared is 0. All right. I would strongly, strongly suggest, look how little code this is, that you type this code into your computer. Look how little that is. I mean, there's hardly anything to it. 
you can even leave this out if you want. Okay, type this, type this into your computer and play with it. It's really important that you understand the for loop. Um, we're going to be working into something that's called arrays, which is like strings of information attached to each other, and for loops are used to work through it. So, I mean, this isn't going away. If this is a little fuzzy, ask me some questions, especially at the beginning of class next time. But uh, next time, uh, next time we meet on Wednesday, we're going to run a little, we're going to do a little coding with for loops.